equation here, potassium is less here, sodium is more here and chloride is more here. Please remember that the Donnan effect is in practice it is not really um, entertained that, that much. So, we say that sodium osmolarity is 142 in both of these compartments. Now, another very important thing to understand the osmolarity is established in the extracellular fluid. So, this is going to be a question somewhere in the USMLE that they would say, okay, so what is the primary driver of the osmolarity, but they would not ask you that way. They would say, well, if the sodium is reduced, what would happen? So, sodium is the primary player. for the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid. Frankly, how I should put it is sodium and chloride. So, there is an assumption in the sodium being the primary player. Sodium with chloride and wherever there is sodium, the assumption is that wherever we have sodium chloride is going to be sticking there. So, usually we do not say chloride, but sodium and chloride are the primary um, players or primary drivers of the osmolarity in the extracellular fluid. Do not forget this. So, anything which happens to sodium, your, 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 your tentacles should go up, your alarms should go up, the alerts should appear. As soon as sodium concentration changes, you should become very, very concerned right away. So, sodium and chloride in the extracellular fluid. Potassium has a similar importance on the intracellular fluid. About 50 percent of the osmolarity inside the fluid inside the cell is contributed by the potassium. So, potassium very important for inside. So, if there is a potassium change all of a sudden what should you do? You should be talking about hey something is going to be happening to the environment of the cell inside. So, the intracellular homeostatic environment homeostasis is uh, at, at, at play here now. So, these proteins, these proteins normally do not move. So, they sit tight, they are big molecules, they are negatively charged most of the time, they cannot cross the blood membrane, uh, the cell membranes or the semi permeable membranes. So, they sit wherever they are. So, the proteins normally do not get out of the, of the blood vessels. Can they actually get out? Yes, they do in trace amounts, they do get out and then they are washed back by the, by the lymphatics. Then in case of the inflammations or in case of the injuries, these also leak out, but in normal physio physiological situation proteins do not leak out into the interstitium. And that is why the Donnan effect is established as well. If these proteins could have gone into the interstitium, if the amount of protein was equal in the intravascular and interstitium, then there was no Donnan effect. Then the amount of sodium outside in the interstitium and in the intravascular system will be the same. So, proteins again, why do they not come out in the interstitium? They are large molecules. They cannot cross the capillary membrane and so they do not come out. They do come out in trace values and then they are taken back. So, anyways, then we have bicarbonates about 24 milliosmoles outside and about 10 milliosmoles inside. Now, bicarbonate is a very important anion and ion. I should say. I always call them ions somehow. So, bicarbonate is a very important N ion. You would see in the acid base systems that this is a great player. So, it really does not have a great contribution to the osmolarity, but it is a big player when we come to the acid base balances. So, you have to understand that you should look at the compositions of various elements. You should know that if that composition is disturbed, what pathological situation will be produced. Many doctors do not know this and then they try to understand that here is a pathological situation and I am going to memorize what happened to the electrolytes. No. So, instead of saying that okay, if I have acidosis or alkalosis, what would happen to bicarbonate? You should see if bicarbonate is less, what would that do? You should study if potassium is less, what would that do? So, instead of studying top down that if I have this disease and this molecule is going to be this way and that molecule is going to be that way, focus on the molecule itself and say if this molecule is less, what is going to be the effect of it? That is where you would actually gain the concept of the, uh, of the uh, diseases. 
then one more thing. So, we, we have established more sodium outside, more chloride outside and more bicarbonate outside than here. So, more bicarbonate here, less bicarbonate here. Inside the cell, greater amount of proteins, then phosphates. Phosphates and sulfates are also in greater amount inside the cell. So, please remember if there is a problem with the phosphates or magnesiums, that is we are talking about something which is going to happen to inside the cell. If you are talking about potassium imbalances, again inside the cell it really matters. Even if it is outside the cell, ultimately it is going to go in the cell. So, potassium balance outside the cell change in balance would actually mean something which is going to happen to the cell. Now, here there is a very important thing, how do we actually measure these things? So, can we actually go into every cell and say okay, what is this intracellular composition? No, you actually are tasked as a doctor that is why you are studying this uh, body fluids. You will be given, so they will take something from here, they will take a sample from the intravascular compartment they might take a sample from urinary, urinary output as well, but they would take a sample from the intravascular compartment, they would give you the values of the intravascular compartment, not even the interstitium, they cannot. The labs will give you the values of the ions inside the intravascular, you as a doctor are going to then be tasked to understand how the ripple effect is going to work. If potassium is low over here, what is that going to do? to interstitial potassium and what is that going to do to the cellular potassium. If sodium is more over here, what is that going to do to the sodium here, to the water here, to the chloride here and what is the effect on this cell. Remember cell you cannot add or remove water from the cellular compartment directly, you cannot do anything to the ICF directly, would you go to the 74 trillion cells and take water out, out of all of them, you cannot. So, this ICF is a poor guy who is dependent upon the things happening in the ECF. And the most common area where the things do happen is the intravascular system. So, the ripple effect goes, the tide goes from the intravascular to the intracellular, sorry to the interstitial and then from there it goes into the intracellular. And normally when you are replenishing the body fluids, when you are trying to correct the body fluids in the hospitals, again you introduce or subtract things over here in the intravascular system and from there the ripple effect goes to the remaining. Diuretics, what do, what do they do? They change the blood, uh, blood volume or the plasma volume, that plasma volume is then goes in an equilibrium with the remaining tissue spaces and the, and the intercellular fluid. Similarly, if you add a saline water or if you add uh, other fluids, then these go into various ways of uh, equilibrating. So, remember the important thing is the intravascular, everything is going to happen from here, that is your key for your USMLE questions as well. Look at what is happening on the intravascular and ECF first before you understand what is going to happen to ICF. ICF is a secondary compartment, it is a dependent compartment, ECF is the primary driving compartment and in that the vascular system is the major driver. Okay, so, phosphates and magnesiums are more inside the cell, potassium is more inside the cell, protein is more inside the cell. Outside the cell, extracellular fluid, if you see interstitium, very small protein, small amount of potassium, greater amount of sodium, greater amount of chloride, greater amount of bicarb. Inside the blood, uh, blood vessels, a larger amount of proteins, then same as extracellular interstitial fluid, lesser amount of potassium, major amount of sodium and chloride and bicarb. Please remember this, if you have to just remember one thing that is sodium chloride for the ECF and potassium for the ICF. Sodium and chloride are primary drivers for the ECF, potassium for the ICF. All right. So, now we have established various compositions, there, there are other things which are here in the vascular compartment. We have the majority of other non-charged components, so these are all ionic things. Proteins are charged, phosphates are charged, magnesium is charged, potassium is charged, sodium is charged, chloride is charged, bicarb is charged. So, we talked about the charged or ions or electrolytes. If we talk about non electrolytes, the things which are not charged, then on this side really the majority 
of the substance 